Shaney, and today we're going to take a look at a reciprocating engine. Now the concept was first developed about 300 years ago and was used as a crude steam engine. But the same principles apply today in today's modern engines. So let's take a closer look. Now to run this engine we can use a shop vac or a vacuum cleaner or even a compressor. Either the vacuum side or the forced air side will work equally well. We can also run the engine in either direction. Now let's take a tour around the engine and watch it at normal speed and then in slow motion. Here we can see the piston inside the box that drives the movement of this engine. Now in slow motion we can see that the crankshaft and the cam for the air diverter differ by half a stroke. Now let's take a look and see how this operates. We're going to start with the air diverter. I'm going to take it apart very, very quickly here. Now we get to the innermost panel. It has holes in it that allows air to flow into that piston chamber and we can see it here from the other side. The next panel has holes in it that help limit the airflow and also forms a channel for the slider. And when this piece moves, it's going to divert air from one side of the piston to the other side. Now in this position, air is going to go in here to this side of the chamber and air is going to come out on this side from the opposite side. And as it switches position, air is now going into this side of the chamber and out this hole from the opposite side. So air comes in this chamber, pushes the piston forward, changes direction, pushes it back again, and then forward, and then back, and it's simply a reciprocating motion back and forth. That's regulated by this sliding panel. Now I'll put the last piece back on. That's simply to hold the air hose in place. The air diverter moves back and forth because there's a cam on this crankshaft that is offset and causes it to move forward and backward as it rotates. The crankshaft is forced to turn as the crank is alternately pushed and pulled by the piston rod which is attached to the piston that moves back and forth inside the piston box. 